What do Minecraft and Microsoft Flight Simulator have in common? The world. More specifically, the endless exploration of a world too big to realistically store on computers. So how do these games handle such large worlds, and how can that be applied to future open world games? To store 510 million square kilometres of complex geometry and textures would be insane. In the words of Flight Simulator lead designer Lionel Fontu. So when we, we started doing this, we realised uh, how much the world is big. The world is really big. See, a, a single Minecraft world comprised of simple voxel shapes would take up more than 60 petabytes of storage. That's 60 million gigabytes. So instead, Mojang uses a procedural generation system. This is an algorithm that creates a world around you only when you reach it. Asobo takes this to the next level by using Microsoft's Azure AI to analyse satellite imagery, 3D scans and elevation data to automatically generate authentic scenery. Luckily enough, Bing Maps was here with two petabytes of aerial imagery, elevation data, 3D scans for a select number of cities. This is then streamed to users' computers via the internet from Microsoft's data centers to be used in the game to synthesize buildings and textures at runtime. For finer details like blades of grass, missing buildings, building textures and the over 1.5 trillion individual trees in the world, data is extrapolated from Bing imagery to insert models and textures where they appear in real life. This kind of technology is nothing short of phenomenal as it utilises existing resources to generate a world more realistic and complete than the most talented modeler could create in years. So this is obviously exciting news for the world of flight simming. But my question is, why not go further? Imagine walking through a photorealistic version of New York in GTA, or road tripping through an exact replica of America in the crew. How about duelling it out in a post-break I mean post-apocalyptic Britain in The Division. How chilling would it be to recognise everything around you and see it destroyed? See, the benefits of a procedural generation system based on real life data is that it bridges the gap between fantasy and reality. No longer are game worlds reimaginings, they are real. A game I've always wanted to experience is one that takes place in my front yard where the world around me is something I understand and I'm familiar with, and the possibilities to exploit this familiarity for horror or for immersion or for exploration are literally endless. Until now, games have always been about putting you into fictional situations to live out some sort of fantasy. Grand Theft Auto's Los Santos is a sandbox for driving, shooting and strip oaking puppies. Fallout 4 is a fictional post-apocalyptic America where you must survive the nuclear apocalypse. The key thing to all games is that they are disconnected from reality by some degree. Some are grounded, some are not. But in essence, they cannot emulate life, and much of that is to do with the breadth of that task. Modelling the entire world, or even a single city, accurately enough to be a substitute has been all but infeasible by traditional methods of map design. It would simply take too many man hours, and with the current game release landscape, no company would be willing to take the risk. But the technology in Flight Sim opens up whole new worlds in gaming. Procedural generation on this level has never been done before and the implications of Asobo getting it right is that as technology advances even more and machine learning finds its place in gaming, we could be on the cusp of something very special. Now I say machine learning because imagine the possibilities with that. Say you built a machine learning model and trained it on city design. You could create entire new worlds with infinite detail that feel like any city in the world but provide a unique experience for a user. Like my front yard game. What if you could build someone's neighbourhood and have a horror game play out in their streets? By introducing real, known and authentic elements from a player's life into a work of fiction, any changes to that routine have a much more profound effect. Much like how found footage films prey on a viewer's investment in the casualness of conversation between characters and the first person perspective, a procedurally generated authentic world preys on the player's preloaded investment. Of course, there'd be limitations to the technology. 
The uncanny valley is a term to describe when something is subtly off about a computer generated entity, like faces. If procedurally generated worlds aren't spot on, there is potential to create unease in a user because of missing data or elements. Then again, horror anybody? Not to mention the technical challenge to create such worlds procedurally that have no flaws like stuck spots or other such bugs. But the technology is there. Like Google Earth with its 3D scans of thousands of cities around the world, and the technology being pioneered by Asobo. I truly believe that these have the potential to completely revolutionise gaming. With the advent of VR and AR, photorealistic and accurate environments seem like the next logical step to act as sandboxes for these new technologies.